Hey again everyone. Not really sure if this video is even going to be relevant by the time I get it recorded, edited, and posted because things move so fast with the Stable Diffusion web UI development. But I had some trouble getting this to work using the web UI, so there is still a use case for the command line Dream Booth training code. It being a relatively stable code base makes it much easier to test out the training process and refine things for my own use. The goal of this week's experiment is to attempt to fine tune a model with multiple interrelated images and be able to prompt them individually and in combination without getting mangled monstrosities and deviations. Though some of those are a lot of fun. For example, think of all the wonderful uses for tribbles. I'm quite fond of their use in frozen desserts, though it appears the smaller ones can be consumed whole. All right, let's get to the actual meat of the video. Ethical disclaimer, you're all assumed to be law-abiding adults. You're responsible for your own actions. So for gathering images, I found that Yandex image search is particularly useful. Not so much for the search quality, but for the interface and filtering. The Yandex filter is very good at removing not safe for work images, and the images can be filtered by size. Refining the search to include only the largest images will usually give you a shortcut to the best quality pictures. You can quickly navigate the images using the arrow keys and right click to save. If you need to gather a cache of data from a single location, a website downloader will save you a ton of time. One that is open source, been around forever and still works well is WinHTT Track for Windows or WebHTTree Track for Linux. So that covers the where and the how, but what and how many images do you need in your dataset? If you follow the process in the paper, have good clear images, and they are very similar to things already in stable diffusion, and you have plenty of classification images, you'll probably get reasonable results. If you have an uncommon subject with a distinctive look, a highly detailed object, or some otherworldly art creation, you may need to do a little bit more fiddling. I was going to attempt to train 22 separate tokens associated to 9 sets of classification images, all related to the same topic. Boldly going where no one has gone before. Well, relax, that's a Charonian. Making 22 datasets with multiple images per set can take quite a while, so I'll try to share a few ideas to speed things up. After gathering the images, I removed anything out of focus or with obvious compression artifacts or defects. Next, using the Windows program IRF and View, I manually cropped each image to direct the focus on the proper part of the image. The training script will automatically crop and resize images fed in, but it's unlikely to grab the best portion unless your figure can be captured with a center cropping. The script can still handle resizing, so that will save quite a bit of manual labor. Within IRFN view, click Edit, and then click Create Custom Selection. Under box 1, set the ratio of height to width to 1 to 1, and then hit Save Values and Exit on the right hand side. I recommend mastering the keyboard shortcuts to make this process less painful. Hold the Control key down and drag to create a square crop around your area of interest. Press Ctrl plus Y to crop, and then press Ctrl plus S to save. If you press enter twice, you'll save over the original file and accept the warning. It's like playing a very repetitive song on a silent piano. I'm going to pop my dataset in here and scroll through it really quickly to give you an idea of what images I used for a couple of the tokens. That way you can compare it with the output later from the completed model. Up first, and not just for laughs, is the Charonians. Makeup is difficult for stable diffusion, and I wanted to see how it would cope with drawing a straight line down the middle of a face. I didn't have a great set of images to work with here, but there should be enough clear frontal shots for it to pick up a general idea. I had fewer for Nurse Chapel, but there are a few high resolution headshots, and some mid body shots, and a few body positions in a variety of backgrounds. I tried to crop these with an obvious focus on the face, and then I did the same for Chekhov. With the Orions, I had images from two actors. With the right amount of training, putting different figures together would result in an amalgamation of the two of them. I also assembled a set of interior shots with instrument and control panels, and the transporter and things like that. I wanted to see what the model will return when fed a bunch of random fake spaceship parts. My concept list JSON files the template included with the repo. The instance prompt uses a unique token and a class token. The class prompt is the general prompt used to generate the class images. The instance directory is the dataset for the group. And the class data directory is the class image set for the group. Groups can share class images if the token can be trained using the same class of data. For people, I've generated separate class images for men and women, interiors, view screens, starships, landscapes, animals, 
and a crew of people and a concept of a style. Using classification images with the script flags to use prior preservation loss, we'll ideally let the model retain more of the information used in the original training. For each of the classes, I had the script generate 250 images using a photo of token name. And then I looked through the class images and deleted anything that wasn't a good fit. For example, a picture of a printed photograph on a table, the subject, or a framed photo of the subject on a wall. I then ran the script again to have it regenerate the deleted images. Though if you find the Shivam Shirao script is slow at generating class images, you could generate 512 by 512 class images using the web UI and copy them over to your class data image folders. I see a lot of conflicting information online about training parameters, and I don't claim what any of what I'm doing is the proper way, but it seems to work well enough. For this training, I'm going to use the with prior preservation loss flag and a prior loss weight of 1.0, which is from the README in the Shivam Shirao repo. I'm also using the train text encoder flag. This repo provides a table with the approximate GPU memory requirements and the flags which affect them, so you can choose which best fits your model. The original paper suggests 3 to 5 Im images and training for 200 epochs. So if your training batch size is 1, 4 images for 200 epochs, that would be 800 steps. It also suggests that there should be 200 to 300 classification images for each sample token in the dataset. But for my odd scenario, that would be tens of thousands of images, so I'll stick with 250 for an arbitrary number. So say my training batch size is 1, and I have 200 images in all of my datasets combined. One epoch, or one trip through all the images, would take 200 steps. 200 epochs would be 40,000 steps. Training my model that much without adjusting the 1e6 learning rate would probably result in an extremely overfit model because a lot of the images, although different, contain similar enough visual information. It may also not overfit your data, but simply forget other data, resulting in bland images. Set the save interval to correspond with the number of steps in one epoch. So, to say it another way, the number of images in your dataset, or some multiple of it. Why not just use like 500 or 1000? Well, the samples would be generated in epoch, and this generally shouldn't make any difference, but subjectively it does. As the model trains, if you examined your sample images closely, you'll see that certain things become muddy, then more detailed, then more clearly overfit, and then we'll probably cycle back to some sort of visual clarity, but probably in a simpler form. With this model, for example, many of the faces became quickly overfit, while the insignia on the uniform was uniformly misshapen across all the figures trained. As the model progressed, the faces became more realistic looking again, and the emblem took on its proper shape but the resulting images were a little simpler in their composition. Using a fixed point, some multiple of your epoch step count to generate your sample images will let you focus on where things are becoming overfit from one save point to another. That way you can decide where to stop your training. If you're going to use a huge data set like this, you're going to want to keep an eye on your sample images and save several checkpoints of your model. Unfortunately, this script will only generate one sample prompt for the entire data set per checkpoint. Try to provide a similar number of images of similar quality for each subject you're training. Otherwise, you'll overtrain some areas and undertrain others. That's really all I wanted to cover for this quick look at using DreamBooth to fine tune a stable diffusion model on multiple tokens. Keep a balanced data set between each of your subjects, use a high number of classification images, use prior preservation loss, and use a save point that corresponds to a multiple of your steps in your data set, and you should be off to a good start. Thanks for watching and stick around if you want to see some pictures that were output using this model.